During this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to embed links into a PDF document. This is an important step to take when finalizing your resources for publishing because it allows for linking back to the stores of the artist whose work you added to your resource. It also comes in handy if you want to include a link as part of the content of your resource. During my first months of creating, I always credited each of the artists whose work I used with their logo and a link to their store, and then saved the document as a PDF through Microsoft Word or PowerPoint. Little did I know, my efforts to add the links were completely useless because none of these PDFs actually had live links in them. When I saved as a PDF through Word, the links were flattened along with everything else, making them inactive. This put me at risk for breaking the terms of use for a few of the artists who required a link back to their store. After doing some research, I learned that my best bet was to take the leap and purchase Adobe Acrobat Pro. I'm so happy I did because it makes this whole process quick and easy. To get started, I'm going to use Adobe Acrobat Pro to open the credits page I created in Tool 4. I'm going to hop over to the last page of this document where the credits are found, and then I'm going to need to display the tools by clicking Tools and making sure that the Content Editing drop-down is selected. Underneath the section that says More Content, I'm going to select Add or Edit Link. When I bring my cursor over into the workspace, my cursor is now a cross cursor, which will allow me to drag and highlight parts of the page where I want to add a link. I'm going to start over here with the free scrapbook fonts logo. I simply click, drag around the logo, and as you can see, the Create Link box has appeared. I recommend selecting a few specific settings for your links so the page maintains a polished look. For the link type, I recommend selecting Invisible Rectangle, Highlight Style, None, and do make sure that underneath the Link Action section, you have Open a Web Page selected. Once you have those settings, go ahead and click now the edit URL box appears, which allows you to enter a URL for this link. This is a moment when your list of contributors document really makes things efficient. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up that document and copy the link for free scrapbook fonts, and then hop back over to Adobe Pro, where the edit URL box is still patiently waiting, and paste the link. Then I'll click OK. You'll notice that there's a thin black line around the image despite the fact that you selected invisible rectangle in the setting for this link. Adobe does this so you can easily see that you have indeed already added a link to this image. It's visible only to you as the creator, not to others who open the PDF. I'm going to repeat that process for each of the links I want to add. Ta-da! Now my credits page is interactive and I've covered my bases on linking back to each artist's store regardless of whether their terms of use requires it. I'm going to save this document and then I'll reopen it so you can see what it looks like to other viewers. As you can see, no rectangles and the links work. Well, that was easy. Keep in mind, you can always use the same process if you want to add links to the content of your resource. I've done this if the resources require students to read a specific article on the internet or to connect customers to a blog post that features more information about the product. You may think of additional uses for this skill depending on the types of resources you create. In Tool 7, 
I will continue to work in Adobe Acrobat Pro to show you how to secure your intellectual property and the work of graphic designers by creating a secure PDF. See you soon.